Look, he's coming. What on earth is he riding? Eddie Merckx, as always. That's right, finally time to test our bikes. Test bikes? You are, what are you testing? You guys are the testers, I've done it all. I've uh, known all about broken bones for years now, enough for me. So it's our turn? Absolutely. Well, then let me uh, show you what I'm on. I'm on the uh, Spark 20, the Scott here, and this is really a great bike. Uh, a couple of things I really like. This has got a slightly longer travel front fork. They've gone and put a, a longer travel fork, slackening the head angle. What's nice is they've upgraded the wheels. I might need that, because uh, I'm going to hammer this thing on the downhill. Well, I've got a lot more carbon than you have, Dylan. I've got uh, this KTM over here, full carbon frame, linkage, carbon fiber seat post, stem, handlebar. We've got a DT Swiss rear carbon shock. And to top it all off, we've got some DT Swiss carbon wheels. Even the rails on that bike is carbon. The seat rails, can you believe it? Check out that. Well spotted. I mean, I don't think you could put more carbon on there. OK, guys, I think enough of that now. We've got in the orange corner, cycling journalist Professor Bike Doctor Neil Gardner on an all-carbon fiber-equipped KTM. In the white corner, though, on this side, daredevil madman Dylan Victor rides a company Scott. Off you go, gentlemen. How are you feeling on the bike? Oh, I love this thing. So you can really feel how light it is, and uh, everything about it is is just so responsive. You push the pedals, and it just goes. Especially over the really rocky stuff, where you would think it would be um, a little bit uh, stuttery, it absolutely flies over. And just because you can give it a quick burst, and off it goes. I really think KTM did their homework with that bike. But I like the um, the lockout, obviously. But what I wouldn't mind is a bit of a bit of a lockout here. Obviously, you can flip the lever but uh, something on the bar would be nice. I'm quite jealous of your thing over there. This is, this is really nice, having the three options. You know, it's not often that you get totally open. So on the downhills, and you can clearly see what Scott's aim was with this bike, is to make a bike that's a really true all-rounder. Because if you think on the downhills, it's, it's totally open. You're climbing, rocky, and then when you're gonna get to something smooth, you can lock it out all the way. There's one thing about this bike that I don't think I'm liking. Something that I thought I would, that I'm not. I don't think I like this fork. I think it's got too much travel for me. On a bike like this where you're riding cross country, I think the longer travel is making it slightly sluggish in the turns. It is a very tight turn course and I think with the um, with a, maybe a longer section of downhill you might appreciate it a bit more. But at the moment, it's definitely through the turns, the KTM is a bit quicker. Hey Nick, how are you doing? Can we weigh some bites? Yeah, sure. 11.62. 11.6. Your turn. Yeah, man, I'm hoping that this one did about 10, huh? Ooh, 10.8. Yeah. So where do you think the weight's gone? Pardon I'm sure. I, think, I, I really do think it's probably the tires. You can probably save a kilo on the tires. This is 9-speed XDR full. Obviously the new one, it is a little lighter, the new XDR. If you've got a 9-speed setup on your bike right now, you've just got your bike, next year 10-speed, what would you do? Would you change or would you keep? It's not just a matter of what 9 speed or 10 speed, it's not just an extra gear. This Dynasys shifting that they're talking about is now a 1 to 1 actuation ratio, which means that one throw of the lever is exactly the same throw as the derailleur. Now, there's a lot of debate about that because SRAM have claimed to be one better. SRAM claim exact uh, actuation, which means that the difference between the throw on the derailleur is actually different between these two top sprockets as it is between the bottom ones over there. But there has been quite a lot of technology that's gone into it, um, namely a new chain. This is a unidirectional chain. But, but wait, one, I just want to know something, right? So now you've bought a bike, nine speed, and uh, you've got XT nine speed, you're riding that bike, all right? You're a regular rider, you just ride most weekends, you want to enjoy the Sani, even do the Epic. I'm telling you, that rider is not going to know the difference. It's not going to make a difference to his riding, whether he's got 20, from seven or whether he's got 30 gears, it's not going to make a difference. In fact, I think it'll hinder him because now he's got more to worry about, another gear, more confusion, as it is most people that I see don't even know how to use their gears to start with. Now you're having to put them on another gear system. And uh, yeah, go to 10 speed, but forget about the unidirectional chain. I think that's confusing.
Well, they speak for it's worldwide, dead on time again, uh, Neil. It looks like they brought us the Dylan's Mount for the day. Let's have a look at it. Fantastic, and I think it's a scalpel. It's uh, absolutely amazing. You know, I just, uh, I think Dylan's in for a big day on this thing. Presents yeah, so well. So. Gee, thank you so thank much you for that. It's Thanks wonderful. Safe. Thanks, eh? Thank cool. Well, let's go with this. Cannondale are absolutely famous for the lefty. In other words, one left fork blade only. For a man who's used to four wheels wherever he can and two wheels only when he has to, just don't think I can get my head around that. But uh, the Cannondale Scalpel, a magnificent machine, which has been refined by Peter Denk, the ex-Scott designer. Neil Gardner loves it, or does he? Well, it's a great design, certainly, and it's certainly unusual. And Cannondale have been very good at uh, innovating. They've, uh, they were the first to do the oversized aluminum tubes. We've got a lefty fork, like you said. A lot of people have got a lot to say about that, but very few have actually ridden it. And I have, and I really like it. Other interesting point about this bike is the, the rear um, of the bike. It hasn't got a pivot point. What they've used is the carbon fiber on the actual rear triangle, and that, the flex of that actually works as the pivot. The old school ruler, how many times can you bend it before it snaps? Well, that's a good question. And there's only one person who can do that test right now that we have with us. <laughs> that's right. Dylan Victor's going to break absolutely anything. So I'm sure the scalpel's in for a tough ride this morning. As you can see, we're in a magnificent location this morning. In fact, right on top of the world, perhaps the highest point for mountain biking in our country. But uh, not quite the safest destination when one thinks of that. We're in Hilbra, Joburg, South Africa. Once the Yuppie Territory, wonderful apartments here 20 years ago. These days, proverbial ghetto, pimps, prostitutes, the underworld, drug dealers, stolen vehicles. Whatever you want, you can buy here as long as it's not from a shop. A little bit of a challenge, I'd say, for our man Dylan to get sure. from here, Neil, across this ghetto, right down to the Fire and Ice Hotel, where we'll be awaiting him, of course, at the poolside. So uh, not an easy task for our man Dylan. And I wonder if he's up to it this morning. Morning, Dylan. Morning, How's morning, it? morning. Morning, Neil. Morning. Just a little doing? checklist. No, we're fine. We're perfect. Checklist? Heights? No, the heights, no. Problem? Pimps? All right. Prostitutes? All right. Stolen vehicles? All right. The Can underworld? The, off the heights. Let's, let's get to that. Television set? Flat screen? I bought one on the way up. <laughs> Fantastic. He's got 15 minutes, in All fact, right. to, to get there, which I think is more than enough time. We certainly did easy, it easy. in about five in our car. And uh, should he do it nearly as a good guy, but if he doesn't, don't you think he'll enjoy that? We've got something very special waiting. Oh, I think I'm worried. I better make it. You better get going, Dylan. Start the engine. Well, I'm out of here. On the count of five, five, four, three, two, one. Away you go, Dylan. So Neil, I think time's running out. Uh, where are we looking for Dylan? 15 minutes, that was the schedule. Yeah, 15 minutes, he's a little bit off. Uh... <laughs> I think he's going to do the challenge. There he comes, what's the countdown, Neil? Well, there you go, Dylan. Welcome back. But uh, I made it. I don't think you did actually. It's 15 minutes 20. No, but you started. The, you started it early. You know what that Five means, Dylan? Seconds. The tutu's ready. The, the, the it little was pink the, bike's within ready. Within the minute. Within Dylan, the minute. It's, Dylan, it says excuses 15. don't count in this business. We can't bank those. The tutu and I the pink bike. I want to compare watches. <laughs> <laughs> well, That's that that unbelievable. Well, he's, he's up to it. Sweet. He's up to it. There he goes. 
Down the stairs, at least, he's managed that. A couple of lunch guests, I'm sure, will be surprised by that, Neil. It's oh, he's getting some good, <laughs> he's got a good, good applause. There he goes up the stairs. Let's see if he makes it. Watch this. Oh, Watch one, that. two, three, four. Uh, one more. On the girly bike, he's doing well. The tutu doesn't hold him back. I have no idea what's happening. Oh, no! What a nut.